Hey, Scott here. Welcome to this week's In the Shop with Scott. As you can tell, the intro is a bit different um, in my office this morning, but the video is going to be a little different. I don't just do woodworking this week. I fix our pool pump and uh, work on some tool stuff. So I hope you enjoy. Well, sometimes I have to take a pause from woodworking and fix things that are broken. Our pool pump started squealing like an angry cat or some other angry animal, I guess. Over the last few weeks, and it's only gotten worse, the bearings in the motor are shot, so it's time to get that replaced before winter sets in and uh, it needs to run nonstop to keep the pool from freezing over. The easiest thing would have been to order a whole new pump assembly, but uh, that'd be a little over $1,000, and a lot of those parts are back ordered because of whatever global supply constraints. So the actual cheapest step was to order a new power head or motor here and seal kit and just replace the um, impellers and all the, the pump assembly onto that. This took just over an hour, so I was pretty happy with that. And back to woodworking, finally getting to apply some finish to these last two uh, fishnets I've been working on. This time I'm using Total Boat's Gleam Varnish. It's a little thinner than the Lust varnish I've used previously on the nets and also on the canoe. Um, I think I really like the way it applies and uh, soaks into the wood. You can see how it really brings that deep brown out of the walnut pieces on these two nets. The next thing I worked on was changing which side of the table saw I have that router table I assembled a couple weeks ago. Um, with it being on the right side of the saw, it's more out of the way of the fence, but it also kind of changes up the workflow space in my small shop. So I'm going to flip it over to the left side of the saw and uh, that gives me more walk room. To make this work, I had to make some adjustments to the motor housing. I'll explain more about that in just a second. So what I did is <clears throat> the motor had plenty of room, but the shroud was hitting the router on this side now. Uh, measured it, and there was a good inch and a half that could be removed. Still clear the motor, give it room to get some air, but also clear the router. So just made a slice, fed in from the back side, and I think we're good to go. All right, so on my previous video, I had put the router on that side which means to use it I had to move the drum sander which means I had to move it around all the time so I want a space between the saw and the bench here anyways so by flipping it over here this space now is the walkway and space to use the router I took that extra wing put it on this end now I can move the sander back over there to wrap up the week I started working on the mini canoe build and adding strips the first one I glued on with hot glue to hold it in place and uh, started building up from there. At this point, the rest of the build I'll use Starbond CA glue and their spray accelerator. This will allow me to build up strips really fast not waiting on traditional wood glue to dry. The strips are pretty tiny. They're 3 30 seconds of an inch wide by 1 30 second of an inch thick um, which makes it really easy to sand them to make them fit but they also doesn't give you a lot to work with and uh, we'll see how this goes once the whole thing is assembled.
I also wanted to try something new on the fishnet glue ups. I usually struggle getting the handle nice and tight with the multiple strips. So I thought I would just do the first strip and see how that goes and still using the sacrificial ash strip here. I don't know if it was the lack of the glue between the strips or just not enough strips, but this uh, ambrosia maple actually cracked in four different places on me. So this would be a fail. I guess I'll have to try something else for these glue ups in the future. Thanks for watching.